I don't know how you felt about those titles, but in my opinion, those are easily the coolest titles that have come out in 2023 that I've seen so far, and they're all from the same plugin. It's MoType 2 by Yanobox, and it is pretty next level. So I'm gonna show you how to use some of these templates that I showed off in the intro, but I'm also going to show you how to shape this plugin to make whatever you want, and I think you're gonna really enjoy it. So thank you to Effects Factory for making this video possible, and buckle up because you're about to get a deep dive in one of the most powerful title tools out there. Let's jump into it. Getting started with MoType 2 is simple. Just start at effectsfactory.com, hit the download to get the Effects Factory app, and then browse to MoType 2 by Yanobox. Once you have it downloaded, it'll appear in Final Cut Pro just over in your titles and generators. The first thing you're going to notice is that there are literally hundreds of presets. And not only that, but you can make and share additional presets. So the value that you're getting for this plugin is pretty immense right out of the gate. We're not just going to drag out presets, which you can do and get great results. Instead, I'm going to show you how to rebuild some of these so you can really understand how to use the power of this plugin. First things first, let's show you how to get a clean slate and make some really basic motion trails to go along with your text. Now, as you may have guessed if you've already downloaded the plugin, our starting point is literally called starting point. It is a clean slate with nothing applied. We can come over here to the on-screen edit text button and we can assign the text to whatever we want. Now, the first thing I want to get rid of is this character fade in animation it comes with, which is easy to do, even though looking at the effects settings, you would not think that anything is easy in this plugin. But trust me, after I walk you through a couple of these, all of these options are going to make a lot of sense to you. Whenever I'm making a new title in MoType, after I've set the text, the first thing I like to do is start in the motion mixer. So turning down the opacity fade gets rid of that fade in animation. Next, I like to turn on show motion paths. This just helps you make sense of where your characters and your text are moving on screen. Just have to remember to turn it off before you actually render out your video. Now that I've got those motion paths, it's really easy to see. If I'm offsetting the X and Y position, you can actually see these lines that indicate to you where the characters are going to animate over the course of this title transition. Now, of course, we wouldn't use MoType if we didn't want these sweet motion trails. So first thing we're gonna do is turn on rendering of trails with a little checkbox, and then increase the motion paint length to be the full length of the motion path. From here, it's just changing colors and blending mode. We're gonna pick no opacity curve, to eliminate that fall off. And then we're gonna get rid of the blending mode and just make it a vivid color. And that's it. We've got a great looking custom title and we have the ability to change the direction that the characters fly in. Now with one title done, we're not gonna stop there. Let's mess with some colors. Using our title that we've already created as our starting point, let's get rid of the fade. And that's as easy as checking a checkbox. That gets us the solid color we want. Next, let's increase the opacity so that none of the background is coming through. To change the color, you might be a little surprised to see that we can change the color source to be the text editor. And what that does is it lets us go back to our text editor, change the colors of each individual piece of text to whatever we want, and now the trails are going to match. There's one small problem with that, and that's that now our text doesn't stand out. But the power of this plugin is that your text can take on multiple meanings. In this case, the color of the text is actually the color of the trail. So we can come back over here to the character rendering tab and we can make it so that all of the text is automatically switched to white. Now this looks great, it's really punchy, but let's also mess with the paint length. This is something that we can keyframe and change so that we get our own custom animation as the title comes onto screen. Okay, now if you're feeling overwhelmed, we're gonna take a step back. Now that you have all of the tools at your disposal to animate titles however you want, we're going to establish a systematic pattern so that you can approach any problem you might want to solve with your titles. Starting with this cool heart animation. Step one is always pulling out the starting point. Step two is setting your text. In this case, we're going to go a step farther and we're going to press command, control, space to get our emoji and additional character picker. And then we're going to style it the way that we want including underlining the heart. Step three is always to define the motion of our animation. In this case, the particles are the motion, not the characters. So we're going to enable particles checkbox. And then we're gonna stop all these animations from flying off of all of the characters and we're going to switch it to just the underlined characters. 
which in our case was the heart. For a simple particle animation, we could be done. That is the defined emotion. Now for me, I don't want a single heart, so I'm going to uncheck that single birth cycle, and I'm going to mess with this birth right here just so that we have a steady stream of hearts pouring out, and I want them to come at a nice consistent pace, so I'm going to get rid of the randomness up from the speed. So now with the motion updated to look the way that I want, we can move on to step four, which is defining the look. Which, surprise, there's nothing actually to do here. The particle is already read by default, so we're finished. And so with that simple four-step approach to find, let me show you how something that even seems like a really advanced, complicated animation is actually really simple once you break it down. Like this. Step one is the same as always. We're gonna pull out the starting point template. Next, step two, edit the text. I'm gonna use the same trick of control command space to get our special character keyboard. Step three, define the motion. In this case, we're just going to do a simple Z rotation and then take it to the next level. And I don't mean take it to the next level in a complicated way either. Spinning something always revolves around a point in space. So if we just move it to the left or to the right, you can see that it spirals in really interesting ways. And because this plugin operates in proper 3D space, you can do more than just left, right, up, down. You can also push it farther into the background as well. To show you how cool this actually is, if we just go down to this transformations tab that we've never used before, we can use it to actually move the camera and look. You can actually see that this spiral path actually goes deep into the background. And so our logo is gonna come flying out in a spiral motion towards the camera. It's a really dynamic move. Now with the path defined for the motion, all I have to do is pick a duration and I'm done and I'm ready to move on to step four, which is defining the look. As always, I just check the box for what I want to have drawn. In this case, trails. Now this long swirly tail is going to be achieved with some similar techniques that we used before. First, I'm going to turn up the paint length so that the tail is nice and long for the entire path of the animation. Next, we're going to get rid of the fade so that we can see more of the tail. And I'm going to make it a sharp tail so that it really sells how far off it's fading into the distance. Next, I'm going to crank up the opacity so that it's really visible. And I'm going to change the blend mode just to get a different look. If you want a full tutorial on blend modes, let me know. But there's plenty of YouTube videos about blend modes out there. Now finally, I want the animation where it fades out at the end just to be a little different. So I'm just gonna pick the automatic version. I could go through a lot of effort to get that looking just right, but I like the swirl and I like how it fades out with this nice gradual approach that we get from automatic. And as promised, our four step approach is simple, but gets us this really cool effect. Now, last but not least, I'm going to show you how to get the cool wavy vapory lines that we see in some of the templates. Step one, drag out the template. Step two, edit the text, making sure to underline the part that we want to animate. Step three, define the motion using a 3D rotation. Step four, enable the trails and start styling the trails to look the way we want. Now I'll slow down for a second as a refresher. We can apply trails to only the underlined portion. We can also choose the color to come from the text editor, which is why we styled the text the way that we did. Now with the fade removed and the length and the opacity cranked up, we're ready to introduce some vapory noise. And it's as simple as cranking up noise amount and frequency. Where frequency is how tight the little curls are and the amount is just how many of them are. Now you might notice some stuttering. That's just because you need more samples depending on how big your motion is. It comes at a performance hit, but honestly it's not too bad, especially for something like this. That's it, you are ready to bend MoType 2 to your will. Now, if you're the type of person that wants to know how every little dial works, just clicking the help button over here takes you over to the full documentation that walks you through how every single preset works. Okay, that was a long one, but hopefully now with that four step program, you can take MoType 2 and make anything you want with it. And I think it's really gonna take some of your videos to the next level. If you found this helpful, make sure to like and subscribe. Your support really does mean the world to me. And if you wanna see more about how to take your content to the next level, make sure you stick around for the next video. I've got something brewing about how to be successful on YouTube and I think you'll appreciate it. Anyway, thanks again. We'll check you on the next one.